Well, welcome back to the channel guys. It's been a while. Anyways, so today we are going to be doing something slightly different. We're not building a motorcycle or a motorbike, anything like that. I'm actually going to be making a CNC uh, woodcutting router table thing. It's basically just going to be an 8 foot by like 52 inches um, table and then you'll be able to slide an entire sheet of like 4 by 8 um, plywood or anything like that in there and then be able to route it out. And the gantry system is going to go over those two rails and then on the gantry itself there's going to be a another y-axis or x-axis and then on that there's going to be a, a z-axis up and down and then we'll deal with the electronics a little bit later but the first thing i got to do is start making that table measure it out and then um, assemble it So the first thing I have to do is get the square tubing, measure it up, and then cut it to length. I'm going to start out by measuring and cutting out the legs, and then I'll form the rest of the table around those. I believe I'm cutting each leg at two and a half feet. To me that seemed like a pretty decent height for the table. So right here you can see that there is a little bit of inaccuracies in the cuts, and what I'm going to do is try to make these as close as possible by shaving off a little bit of metal from each leg. Once I was happy with the length of the legs, I went ahead and laid them out just to get an idea of how big this table actually is going to be. For this next part, I am actually using the plasma cutter to cut out the gussets and other parts that I need to put the table together. And those seem to line up real nice, and now I just gotta drill out the holes. In retrospect, I probably should have had the gussets on each side, but this will do for now. Later on, I actually ended up welding it together. Alright, so about 40 drill holes later, I finally have the legs and the length of the table set up. The little mounting plates that I have on here, I actually have them alternating, so there's one on this side, this one on that side, so that's to help against the twist rotation not peeling up on the the connection right here. All right, so next I have this plate right here, and what I'm gonna do is just weld it onto um, the end of the tubing on this side, and then another one on that side over there. And this piece right here will have some holes drilled into it, and then we would be able to uh, mount it just like that. Here I'm welding on these tabs so that I can bolt on the cross members. And now I just need to line up the tubing with the holes and then drill it out. One thing I kind of regret is using this size of tubing. It was honestly the only size tubing that the steel place had that I went to. You know, overbuilt isn't a bad thing, so I'm okay with it. To help strengthen up the table legs, I actually cut out these angle pieces and um, those should really help stiffen things up. Then on the other side of the table, I put another cross member to really strengthen the table and make it one square unit. Okay, well I think the frame is all finished for now. As you can see, I added that cross member there. I wasn't welding anything on this table. Um, I definitely underestimated the amount of supports that I needed so that it wouldn't move. And that's why, that's why I have uh, this section here. I also added uh, a couple bars in here and uh, another one right there. And it, it still isn't uh, perfectly um, taut, I guess you could say. But for now, I think that it is uh, stable enough to move on to the uh, next part, which is, is going to be mounting the rails onto the frame itself. Okay, so the way we are going to mount this is there's uh, these mounting holes along the bottom. And I 3D printed this little fixture here that has two little holes in it that are perfectly lined up with the holes on the, the rail. And all I'm going to do is put this on the frame and then our drill bit just feeds right into there. And that should keep it, you know, in the same location 
throughout the length of this tubing. So to get these rails mounted, I went ahead and marked each hole so that I know where to put my fixture when I'm drilling. Honestly, I could have just measured all these out instead of using a fixture. It was just a 30 minute 3D print and it was worth the consistency just to use that. Next was the crappy part and that was to tap each of the holes. But it turned out pretty nice and those machine screws went in really well. Once that one was finished off camera, I went and did the exact same thing to the other side. Next we are putting together the parts for the gantry system and I went ahead and already designed those in CAD and then cut them out with the plasma cutter. There's going to be two of those so I'm actually going to be doing this twice but one is off camera. And that seems to work pretty well. After that I went ahead and mounted the first stepper motor. This will be for the Y axis. And then for the other side, I need an idler pulley so that I can have the belt go all the way through the machine. The idler pulley was also 3D printed and then I just pressed in a skateboard bearing inside of it. And that spins pretty nice. Once those Y axis holders were finished, it was time to actually create the gantry itself. And for that, I went to the scrapyard and found this aluminum I-beam and it will work perfect for what I need it and it's pretty straight as well. Once I put it on the actual machine, I can measure what length it needs to be and then I cut it out. And then another tedious part here is drilling and tapping holes so that I can mount it to the gantry supports. And then off camera I did that again so that I can mount the rail the z-axis is going to ride on. Then at my local scrapyard I did find one of these linear actuator deals and basically I'm just going to modify that so that it can ride on my y-axis. The cylindrical motor there is the spindle and then the square motor is the stepper that will allow us to raise or lower the z-axis. So I'm tapping more holes to make it compatible with my machine and now we can mount the spindle onto that linear actuator. And then after drilling a few more holes and tapping, I can put the stepper motor on there as well. I use the coupler between the stepper motor and the lead screw for the z-axis. And then this little piece right here that I'm welding together is going to be the belt holder. And that mounts on our Y axis just like so. And then the belt will ride right behind that. Next I went ahead and mounted the Z axis. And then for easy adjustment I made these belt holders that um, kind of bite onto the belt and then you can squeeze them together and tighten them. And then tighten the belt holders together. I then assembled the belt system for the X axis and sh After ordering some more belts, I finally got it all assembled and it slides quite nicely. Now that the table itself is finished, I gotta make a container for all the electronics. And then it's time to assemble all the wiring. Alright, so that last clip was about a month or so ago, and um, well, the machine's pretty much done. Alright, so this is the electronics portion of the machine. I kind of regret this right here. Unfortunately, I didn't make the wires long enough and I would much rather have it go up and over 
but uh, for now I guess it's just gonna be a, an annoying little straight shot and this is kind of our operator panel sort of kind of and uh, basically we have our big old emergency stop and that cuts off power to everything over here I did add a little bit of cable management and um, I found these tracks on Amazon which were really cheap and you just feed the wires through I just had enough space with these ones um, maybe go a little wider would be nice but uh, yeah that looks real good and then I just have this aluminum channel that I bolted to the side and it uh, fits perfectly right inside of there I do have this handle here um, it was off of a winch and I basically modified it to spin a lead screw that goes all the way underneath the table and the idea was I would have this angle iron right here and I would be able to tighten um, whatever workpiece that I had down. But then I quickly realized that um, if you're cutting a piece and it's just clamped like this, then it's just gonna fall out or it's gonna, as you're cutting halfway through it, it's gonna kinda go like this. So instead I just have a spoil board and it's just some particle board and uh, you put your piece on top of that and then just cut it down um, to the spoil board. Anyways, without further ado, let's see what this table can do. I'm going to get my laptop and um, plug in a program and see if we can cut out like this little fish thing. Design I want to cut out, I'm just going to write a command to enable the machine. Right now I'm just going to jog it to a placement that I want so that we can cut this fish out because it's pretty big. Well guys, there you have it. This is my first cut on my homemade CNC uh, router machine. And I, <laughs> that, is, that is so cool. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this thing later on in the future. But for now, I think that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.